when the horses come in. No, don't. Actually, be kind of quiet when the horses come in. In fact, here they come. Fix them up, put some training into them, and sell them as a business. And then we've got Carrie Blackmer over here with 4x the, the trouble, four times the trouble, because they actually called Tempest. We didn't tell Carrie that his name was Tempest before she picked him. Um, Carrie Blackmer is based in Frederick, Maryland. All three of the trainers are professionals who, um, who have businesses. They take courses through training, they also teach people, they also compete themselves, and they're all struggling to make a buck. So this is good PR for them. They're going to show you how good they are and then you're going to send them more business. So we also have some judges, judges slash commentators that are just outside and we're going to bring them in after they've ridden so that we can discuss what's going on. Um, we have Stephen Bradley, who you saw a couple of hours ago in here, um, Olympic three-day event rider, who rides all thoroughbreds off the track, by the way. Um, we have Ann Hamilton, who just wrote a book called Raja, Story of a Racehorse, written by Raja, and she is going to be the horse. So she's going to give some commentary from the horse's perspective, because that's how she thinks. She's an ex-steeplechase jockey. And then we have Andrea Seafelt Knight, who is a Lady Legends jockey, we call her now. Um, wrote in the Derby and the Preakness and was one of the top jockeys a few years back. And she's going to give us a perspective of um, the racing industry and what she sees going on. My goodness, Eric's already up there. Holy moly. Part of what you guys should watch is how these people get on. What we told them is bring your own tack, bring your own equipment, whatever you think is appropriate for getting on a horse that you really don't know what's going to happen. So you'll see some yokes. You see, let's see, this uh, Tiffany over here has a yoke on her horse, which is what they often use in the track. It's like a martingale, but it's really a, a oh my god strap. Something you can grab onto when things go wrong. Um, Carrie's got a breastplate that she can do the same thing with. But Eric's such a good rider, he doesn't need it. So. Oh, he's got the best horse too, yeah. Wow, everybody's already up. Okay. And Tempest over here, four times the trouble, is a little bit looky at everybody. Which we kind of expected. He's probably, of these three, the one that has shown a little bit more tension. But he's awful fancy. And so what he's doing, I think, is pretty typical. It's that sort of jig, a little bit sideways. And what Tiffany, I mean, what Carrie seems to be doing is just staying balanced over her feet, light in her seat, ready for anything but not interfering too much. Because she knows right now, if she were to lose her balance a little bit, or squeeze too much, or pull too hard, or surprise him in any way, that something bad might happen. So she's settling the horse nicely. Letting him kind of glide around the ring and get settled. Eric is sitting there thinking, well, how am I supposed to show off when my horse actually just goes around like a show horse? <laughs> and you can see why he picked the horse. That's a beautiful mare. Anybody who thinks that mares are more difficult might want to keep an eye on this one through the trainer challenge and see how she does. Because I think she's going to prove that stereotype wrong. I hope. But wow, look at that walk. Which I find pretty unusual for a horse who actually won her last race in December. They retired that mare off of a win. They didn't think she necessarily was going to go further. She'd done her thing, she was sound, and they wanted to make sure she retired sound. Which is really what we want people in the racing industry to do, right? And if the value of the demand of these horses was high enough that they were worth some money when they came off the track, if they came off the track sound, 
four people would retire them and sell them for five or six or ten thousand dollars. Then we're going to ask our judges over there to comment on what they're seeing with each horse and what the trainers are saying and give some advice for what they should be doing over the next five weeks. Meet Stephen Bradley. <laughs> Maybe. Wow. Is that not? I swear to God, these horses haven't been ridden. I, I mean, it's really. You probably think I'm a liar. Uh, yeah, actually, Tiffany was, was, I said, yes, you can go out, you can work them in hand, you can do it in there. She kept saying, can we just get on them once out there just to make sure it's okay? And I said, no, no, we really want to make this real. Because so these, the, the, these horses haven't been ridden. Other than at the track. Okay, who's next? Let's go Paris. See so if you can get your left lead. That was good. And, you know, if you watch what she was doing there, she knew she could use her aids like you would a dressage horse, like that last guy in here with that fancy Andalusian or whatever he was, who's really broke. I mean, he was having the horse do it all off his legs in the seat, his aids. With these guys, you kind of let it happen because it's so natural. In five weeks, he'll listen to her leg. But, you know, these guys are used to having riders with legs way up here. So they're not so used to read seat or leg aids. Good. Let them walk. Good. And that's one of the things that obviously takes some time. They'll go in a straight line usually. And they'll turn usually. But they don't really move off the leg usually. All three have a very different way of going too, don't they? They're all of real quality, but... I don't know, you might want to make this one a fancy show hunter. Sell it for 150 grand, then go on to the next one. How fast? Wow. So, three for three, six for six actually on the leads. Wow. Let him walk. Good. Woo! Um, okay, let's give him a little bit of quiet applause and see if the horses can handle it. Good job. Yeah, do the Quaker one. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. All right, why don't you get off? Switch horses. No, I'm just kidding. Get off. What? Bareback, right. And we are going to um, ask the trainers what they felt, okay? See what they thought. Um, and ask them what they think they're going to be doing. Can we get the judges to come in too? And actually, if um, horse training project hat, you can buy them in our booth. Really cool logo. Okay, let's, uh, Carrie, come on over here. Why not? And you can hold the horse and talk at the same time. Here, I'll just give you the mic. Tell us what you think. Um, well, he, uh, he likes to keep moving. We learned that pretty quick uh, in the stables. As long as he keeps moving, he's a pretty happy guy, but he's definitely more and more. Um, I have the youngest one of the three, and as we saw yesterday, I kind of yeah, we didn't we didn't tell him that. This one is coming more, so he races a three-year-old quite a bit. The other two are coming six, right? And the last race, December 21st, I believe, he's pretty fresh off the track. I think anybody in here would agree bringing any four-year-old into this environment would be a lot to ask, let alone one that's just right off the track. But I think it's hard to walk it up. Um, but my plan was, just from what I saw yesterday, I knew he might be a little bit more nervous, a little bit more up in the ring. So my plan was just to come in here, try to have a relaxed ride, not stress him out, keep him happy, and I'm thrilled with how he went. I love his gait. I think he's got a great balance trot and a great balance canter. I'm excited. Thank you. Thank you.
So, as um, those of you that were here yesterday saw that all three of us agree about solidified um, training potential and ability just based on how well behaved um, he was yesterday um, when all the horses came in the ring, we all agreed that um, he showed great trainability. You look at him right now. Um, he uh, learned quickly in here that I just wanted him to go forward and straight around the ring. He was willing to accept my leg without kicking or getting upset about it, and I didn't see any reason why I couldn't just start right now teaching him how to move forward off the leg and go straight. Um, I'm actually really quite happy that I got to ride him today. I couldn't believe how amazing his canter was because he didn't really show us that yesterday. Um, he was so quiet. <laughs> And um, I don't really know that he even cared for us yesterday, but um, I, his balance is unbelievable. I think he's going to be a great horse, whether I get to keep him or Stuart gets to keep him for this um, next five weeks. All right, and Eric Dirks. Well, the first thing I usually like to um, uh, request the conqueror is to get the horse comfortable in their environment. And she came out very quiet, and quiet in this environment. So I got to uh, work a degree further and just teach her a little bit about my leg age. My legs are way longer than a jockey's, so that was going to be my first concern, hopping on her. How is she going to take to my leg? Um, but she was very good about that. So I don't know if anyone noticed. I would go down the quarter line and do little leg yields and ask her to step off of one leg over the other. As far as um, the head placement, as Stuart mentioned earlier, a lot of the horses, they carried their head up. I don't like to dictate where the head goes. Um, I think once the horse learns the balance, they end up stretching on their own. And you can see, if we have a really good eye, you saw this horse, particular horse, she was figuring out how to stretch her neck. She would first drop her neck. And what she's going to be learning is how to stretch her neck, use her back, and carry the rider's weight. Um, and I think you're going to see even bigger gains from her that she already has. The less I have that the horse is going to be working against, I feel the better. Um, and I'm very comfortable. I didn't use the neck strap on this horse today. I just had a good vibe about her. Um, but usually I would have a neck strap rather than going to the rings. All three of them are jumping up horses. You know, whether it's just rails or whether it's you know, the handles and the of the jumps and stuff like that. All three of the horses seem to be very, very good in their minds, especially considering that they all three ran so recently and they've been so good here today. I think that's going to lend itself to them being good students. And knowing all three of these guys as riders and jockeys, I know they've got good plans and, and got good systems to prove themselves on other horses. And it's going to be a lot of fun. You hear that, guys? Flat work in five weeks. There's your challenge. <laughs> So I guess at the Pennsylvania Expo, we'll have a course set up for you, right? If you'd rather, we could put three barrels. So thanks for coming.